So welcome to the 1990 series. My name is Amanda O'Shea from the Serendipity Experience and I have Jane Cockrell here with me. Hiya Jane. Hi, how are you doing? Oh, it's so <laughs> lovely to see you again. It feels like a long time since we've had a, a proper conversation. Yeah, yeah, it has been. Time flies, doesn't it? And we just get busy doing fun stuff. <laughs> and it's, it's so nice. I'm um, wanting to give thanks in these little um, conversations to people that have been important to me and have um, been in my world when there's sort of uh, been some big events going on. And, and you certainly were present at one of those. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember sitting on the bus as I was coming from the airport to visit you and you called me and said, I don't want you to worry, but the house is burnt down. <laughs> I was like, <"What> the? <laughs> literally, you were on the way. So, so I'll just take us back. We met actually, it was on a Dave Kibbe training about three That's years ago. Yeah. Um, and he had pulled together some people um, to, he had, was all gonna, he was going in to do some schoolwork to, with headmasters, 12 headmasters or something. That's right. I think it was coaching leaders, he called it, that course. Yeah, something like that. It's a long time and, ago. And that's where we, we met. And I think we, I don't know, I did two of Dave's little courses then. And, and I do remember, you know, being very impressed by you in that in that circle, and you know, um, and we shared a room. Maybe that was at another one, or maybe it was at that one. We shared a room, and so it was really nice. Got to know you, and then of course, you know, I was hosting a retreat soon after that called "It Is What It Is" yeah. down in Spain, and um, invited you as a guest facilitator, which was great that you you showed up. Um, and it was you came to Spain first. We were doing a number of little workshops locally in Javier, we'd set up like um, some, yeah, three workshops, I think, to local That's right. people. Yeah. And that was, and I was on the radio, you were coming to be a guest on the radio. Yeah. And we still did that, even though the house had had the big fire, we still went on the radio. And we, um, and I, yeah, I went out with a coaching client one day and had the two dogs, thank goodness, with me, came home and the house was on fire and you were on your way. And it was hours, literally, you landed hours after everything had happened. And you were such it a... Was still, it was still smouldering in a big way. It was hot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, I, mean, I can't remember, but I remember we got... My neighbour took us in, me, you, and the dogs. That's <laughs> right. That's Oh, yeah. I, this, it was quite unforgettable. <laughs> lovely Karen Marshall. And what happened for me was... I suddenly had my own personal aid worker. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Previously to then, you'd been sort of used to flying off to all sorts of countries that had, had earthquakes and all sorts of things going on, right? And yeah. you were know, involved in that world. That's what I remember. Yeah. You were just amazing and you got me all organised and you helped me and my insurance claim and everything. And so I'm so grateful for for that for you being there at that time and it was quite a big thing and i mean I, I felt i dealt very well with it you know yeah you did you did you were so balanced and so kind of clear-headed about the whole thing it was amazing it was amazing it's brilliant it, it was really and i give that thanks to the understanding of you yeah. know how we met sort of via that kind of inside out understanding you know community if you like yeah on, uh, on date on one of dave's courses so i that's my thank you to you for being there. And of course that turned my life completely around and I ended up, that's, I ended up going in and working in the world of recovery, which took me down another path to, and so that's three years later that I'm, that I'm here. But I'm more interested to know um, what you've been up to. In yeah. The past, um, two and a half years or, or where, whenever since we first met, because you, we had a wonderful week, Jane, down on the retreat. Yeah, it was beautiful. After, after the fire, we drove down there and we had a really nice seven nights, seven days, didn't we? In the yeah, it was great. It was a wonderful experience. Really, really, yeah, really, really profound. Yeah, it was great. So we're, um, you know, we'll, uh, we're looking at doing a little reunion for the people who have been on three of those retreats coming back. So yeah, oh, okay. hopefully all the, all the facilitators as well will be able to, to come and have a little, we're going to do a weekend, probably in Javier. 
just a long weekend it's for oh, everybody cool. all the facilitators and all the guests on the love and clarity and it is what it is and serendipity experience retreat so you since then you were busy and you were doing different things and you were working a lot with um you were going overseas a lot and you had work yeah. in africa but i would like to know more about this future purpose is the title of today's little conversation um yeah what are you what are you up to now yeah so uh, so just to, just to join the dots a little bit i guess so yeah i was still i was still working kind of i was running i so i was running um uh development and aid organizations for a while and and then what i've done over time is i've sort of transitioned in i did coaching for a while and then i've transitioned more uh, into doing kind of kind of more like consultancy sort of support but still for people a bit like me but who are ceos of charities or non-profits and helping them what i realized is that i was i'm i'm kind of quite handy at helping um guide people through the kind of strategy development process which is generally something that a lot of organizations will either do or at least review on an annual basis and it's something that the ceo tends to lead on um, but then has a lot of kind of different information and people that they need to coordinate to do it um, so that's that's what i've kind of moved across into so it's funny how the way life leads you so what happens now is that i work with with um uh, uh, I work with these leaders and what we do is we we kind of step back and take a look at all the process and all the things that need to happen but also given the understanding that, that we have and kind of really looking at I guess what they I don't tend to use three principles ling language much anymore but talk about mindset or psychology but actually looking at well where are all the members of your team at the moment what do they know what are they worried about are they nervous about um overwhelm are they worried about the complexity of the changing environment so we factor all that into the way that we do the strategy development thing and one thing that i've really come to see as i've done this over and over is the bit that people are most kind of wary of is really looking at well where's the world going to be in three years time so if we're making a plan for three years ahead say just as an example um, a lot of people are a little bit nervous about envisaging what the world could be like at that point in time because they feel they don't know or they don't have the time or they don't have the capacity to actually do that so what i've done is i've i've started a new project it's called the future purpose project and the idea is to really simplify this process of dealing with um emerging trends uh, there's a whole there's a whole school of thought called strategic foresight and there are a bunch of people called futurists who are all very, very cool and do this stuff at a really high level and are kind of really I'm super geeky and I'm really impressed by them. And so what I'm kind of doing is I take some of that stuff and I say, right, how do you get like the most benefit from that information without, for the folks that I help without them being overwhelmed? so it's again it's a kind of combination of how do you simplify the way that you do things make the process really clear and then how do you look at kind of psychologically or from a from a quality of mind perspective where the people are in the organization that you have to use this information so it's trying to simplify something that's a bit complicated or a bit overwhelming in a way that people can hear so that they they are more help they are more happy they're happier to engage with it and actually kind of integrate it into their process. So I know that sounds a bit, it's a bit wordy and a bit complicated because I'm still kind of building it at the moment. I haven't got uh, a nice kind of slick way of describing it yet, but is that's what's kind of coming through. And as I'm helping people sort of more and more do it, I'm kind of going, okay, this is, there's something in this, this because it's really important, particularly around things like technology developments um, and climates and trends in social trends like isolation or mental health challenges which are obviously becoming they're moving very fast and they're becoming more significant over time and really if we're running a charity or not for profit we need to anticipate where that's going not just where it is today right so that's 
that's my best attempt to explain what the future purpose bit is about but i'm really excited about it but i'm just not quite slick with the language yet <laughs> uh, are you, are you, i mean it's i think that's what i remember you being in the the group that we were in and, and that your language and the way that you articulate things is so for me so lovely to listen to and when you were part of our as a facilitator on the retreat i love listening to you i love listening to your voice I, I find it very easy to listen to oh thank you yeah. yeah and i'm sure that that you know that you are that because i think as you just said there is something about language that does suddenly just like oh you know oh it's like all oh, too much or like oh i could never get that or i you know i could never um it's too much for me or it's too whatever for me i, I, I see that and, and actually no no it's not like this is available for everybody to understand. Yeah, exactly. And it is interesting, no matter how almost like the role that we have or how senior we are or how much experience we've got of a certain thing, there are areas where we think often there's a belief that, oh, I can't go there or I don't really know about that. And actually, if it's it's not nearly as complicated as we like to think it is and not nearly as complicated as some people want to make it because then they can sort of like be an expert. <laughs> so I, I'm quite anti-expert in some ways, you know. <laughs> That's so interesting. So you've got like at one, one end here, or this, you've got the expert and on one hand here's the excuses, you know. Yeah. <laughs> people that, yeah, want to soak it up and people that just, I suppose it, they believe that they're making their life simpler by staying back but actually what you're seeing is life would be simpler if, yeah if yeah you kind of yeah understand it in a way so there's an art to that there's a real art to yeah helping people understand yeah it's like it's about awareness but not kind of judgment so it's about awareness like expanding what i and what can see is going on out there but not thinking either uh that i need to kind of un like totally understand all of it or come to conclusions too quickly it is just fine to kind of see it all happening because when you see it all happening or when you sort of are more willing to open up to kind of new ideas or a, a kind of a wider lens of things but without having to kind of make it significant or serious or come to conclusions or kind of get specific results from it that still is really really helpful in terms of how you kind of live in your in your in your general life and how you run an organization because then it's just that something something can occur and you think oh i think i can find out more about that or actually that i need to look at this or that meets up with this so the the information that you need will arise like it'll come to you but it's almost like you have to have the have to have the intention and the willingness to actually keep your eyes open and your ears open mm, and your heart open i guess right I guess everything yeah. because because i see even what you're saying how we limit up we limit ourselves we put limitations on ourselves yeah whether that's in home life relationships business you know we that's what we do and and somebody like you comes along and just seems to oh, i don't know to to take that away and to take take that limitation and it's almost like i don't know guide guide you to to have the uh, yeah you can you can do this let me help you you know let me let me yeah and yeah and as soon as people have done it once or twice they're like this is really simple isn't it you're like yep <laughs> you don't need me anymore do you no <laughs> somebody else and you do the same thing okay and it's, exactly it's little, i love that and i i'm sure that those people even if they are like i guess is it the ceos that you first sort of Sort of is that your first port of call meeting with a ceo yeah it it tends to be it tends to be because because they they're the one they're the ones who kind of right at the center of the problem mm -hmm. yeah so so that's that's who i i like to try and talk to if they if, if they're willing yeah and and that's who i generally that's who i end up working with yeah and then to see it you know it comes down and then also to see where where if they they might see something in work like that or in the business they might also look at something like that in, in another area of their life which is exactly cool. yeah 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 it's really, yeah. It's really cool reminds me of my dad when he first you know started texting or, or messaging or whatsapping or, <clears throat> and now <laughs> emojis and everything <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 dad slow down with the emojis that's enough <laughs> i can see i see you found another one <laughs> <laughs> it's cute 
cute, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So um, thank you so much, Jane, for for everything that you're doing for the world of nonprofit and the world of you know charity and the, for the world of, of everybody because um, I'm very, very lucky to have someone like you on board and as part of their future purpose and finding their future purpose. And thank you, it's, it's, it's a pleasure. And, and thank you as well for everything you do, Amanda. You're, you're, a, you're a gift, you are a gift. I always worry when people say that. I say that to people when they come on the retreat and they're, they're the, sometimes you get that one, yeah, you're a gift to us. You're like, I don't wanna be the gift. <laughs> I know that's not what you mean. <laughs> that you know we're all here doing our little thing in our own little way aren't we you know and yeah yeah exactly and and it's almost like well we don't really have any choice because we're just going to get up and do it anyway we'll find that life has got us doing whatever we're supposed to be doing <laughs> so keep doing whatever it is you're doing we had a call the other day with um a, a call with a lady called deborah and her title was do the thing that makes your heart sing nice yeah Isn't yeah it? yeah that's lovely that was a couple of a couple of a couple of conversations ago. So lots of love to you, Jane. Thank you for your time. Thank you for being so lovely. And um, we'll, I'll see you when I'm next looking at you. That's great. Thanks a lot. Take care, Amanda. Love. Bye, Jane. Bye. Bye everybody. Hope you enjoyed that.